Hey guys, Cleve here. This video is going to cover pathing and some advanced techniques and some basic techniques on how you can utilize pathing in your park. For starters, the path tool is located down here in the bottom right. You simply select your texture and start clicking on the terrain and you will make paths. It's important to note that there are a lot of options. For example, angle snap determines the angle at which you will snap when attempting to make turns. Spacebar enables and disables angle snap. With it off, you can freely make whatever curve you want. Length also determines how the curves will be affected um, and how far your path will go when you actually drop it. So this can range from one to five. For example, here is a 90 degree turn at length one. And here is like a 90 degree turn at length five. You can do this angle snap to make it more obvious. But um, so remember length can affect your curves and how they look and can also make it easier if you're just doing a long straightaway uh, you can bump length up to five and get through with your job quicker the next thing very important to remember is width pass and planet coaster can range in width from four meters all the way up to ten meters guests in planet coaster will collide with each other so it's very important that high congestion areas have both as much pathing available into and out of them as possible, and also uh, the widest path that you can make and still make your area uh, look good. Because of course, you know, it's all about looking good, especially in Planet Coaster. So that's width. And these camera options, you can play with them at your own leisure. These affect how the camera will move and react to when you place a path. Uh, to remove a path, right click, on the section, we'll delete it. And now the big one, select grid. People ask all the time in my stream, uh, how do you make plaza areas? How do you make square paths? How do you make pathways that work for building interiors? And the trick to this is select grid. Um, the main thing to remember is you need to have a path or a building already laid out to select the grid from. Once you have that, Click select grid, and now mousing over any piece of pathway will uh, show you this grid preview. Um, once you find the grid that you would like to start building from, if you left click, you now have the ability to build a path right inside of that grid. And some people, uh, may you may be playing on a smaller monitor, or uh, this window comes uh, default all the way minima, or all the way dragged down. Uh, but this is actually a scroll bar right here, and the square edges exist right there. Um, so scroll that window down or pull this window up, and this checkbox right here is going to allow you to have square edges on your paths. This may or may not be uh, desirable. It really depends on how you want to design your area. But if you do want square edges, this is how you do it. So there you can see the difference between having square edges on the edge of a plaza and having rounded corners. I hope that helps. Uh, the next important thing to remember or realize about pathing and using the grid is the grid will size to whatever size piece you select. So if I choose select grid and now click on this 10 meter wide piece, I am making paths that can form to 10 meters. It's very important uh, to realize that. It's also important when thinking about how you wanna make connections into and out of your plaza areas. Um, and how those pieces will line up if you want to continue along the same grid. Now, I kind of showed this indirectly, but I want to point this out. This is the entrance to my park. It's beautiful, I know. This is the default sandbox. Um, if you would like to make, say, your grand plaza entrance area, and you would like this area to be perpendicular to the entrance, utilizing the, terrain, the pathing select grid right off the piece that they give you, excuse me, I can now make my plaza, and this can extend all the way out to here, or here, or here. And this, in, this grid should be perfectly aligned to the entire park boundaries. Um, it may not be feasible to continue along this grid for your entire park build, but say, for example, you want to center something directly in the middle of your park, and you want that to face completely perpendicular to the entrance, um, this is a fantastic way to do that. Um, and 
don't forget you can you can delete this and rebuild it uh, if you if you so choose this is within the park boundaries you're fully capable to delete it so if you want to for example make this path uh, make more than one entrance make these make this enter into a wider pathway um, whatever you want to do just make sure that you have a few pieces laid out as a reference for the grid go ahead and delete this stuff and then reutilize this grid as the reference and this could be four it could be ten whatever you want um, so those are the basics on paths and how to place them. Now there is also uh, some more options that you have available to you on this advanced settings. When you enter it into the path editor, you've got some pretty self-explanatory settings, but I want to go over them quickly. Um, I'll go over the curb on ground path. This is a fancy British way of, of talking about in America what we call this curb thing we just spell it differently we, we call it exactly the same thing so if you turn this off now you've got no curb this may or may not be desirable again it's all up to you and how you want to build your park and how you want to line your paths uh, the next setting is railings on ground queues railings on elevated and railings on ground path this should be really self-explanatory um, if these are checked it'll build a railing if they're not checked they won't build a railing. Um, the last thing that I need to go over before I show off these options is how to make raised paths. Um, the default hotkey is U to go up and J to go down. So if you would like to make stairs, you can push U twice. And this is going up in increments of, I believe, two meters. U once with this ramp is going up in an increment of one meter. J one more time to go back to flat. Then we can go down in an increment of one meter or down in an increment of two meters. It's really that simple. If the keyboard is intimidating to you and you would like to use your mouse instead, if you hold left click and then drag upwards towards the top of the screen on your mouse cursor, you get the same effect. Perfect. Uh, so now we can cover pass supports. Pass supports are these objects right here. If this isn't checked, we can remove the supports. And if it is checked, we can re-add them. And I accidentally just showed you another feature of the pathing tool is the path reskinner. So say, for example, you've made your beautiful path and suddenly you decide you don't like concrete anymore or your rustic gravel and you want a flagstone path. All you need to do is click on the path with your new texture or your new options and it will reskin the path exactly the way you want. No need to delete and redo. Um, the last thing that I think is important to cover in paths is um, the advanced way you can make intersections. So the standard way to make an intersection in Planet Coaster would be to just, you have your pathway and then you find where you want your intersection and then you just start going. And that's great. Um, and if you have it set to less than 90 degrees, you can turn and that's great too. Um, however, it's some, it doesn't look entirely natural, and some, you may see uh, in some people's parks, you see a more natural way to cause a break in a path, and you do this by holding the Z key while you have the intersection available to you. So uh, by intersection, I mean right here, we're on the edge of the path, and if I click, it would start a new path, but instead of clicking, I'm going to hold Z on your keyboard as if you were rotating. And this allows you to do some pretty cool things, like for example, we can make a nice little triangle here. This could be a great spot for a sign or a tree or something like that. Uh, it's really up to you uh, and how you choose to design your park. But I just want to show you guys the tools and how to best utilize them. So uh, hopefully that helps people figure out how to make some more natural looking paths. Um, before I forget, there's also one more uh, reasonably useful 
uh, little trick that I want to show you guys is how to make a pass that go right up close to another path, like for example, a sidewalk on a main street. Um, you see that if I get close to this path, it immediately starts snapping to it. However, if I hold the control key, we can make a path that goes very close, but doesn't actually intersect with it. And if we continue to hold control, we can make that path go wherever we want. So I hope that helps. Again, these tools aren't um, going to be immediately, um, I don't know, obviously easy for you to use, but with a little practice, uh, you'll get the hang of them. And I hope this video helps. If it does, give me a thumbs up. And again, in the comments, let me know what you liked or what you disliked or what I did not uh, help you with enough. And I will utilize that information for the next videos. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching.